Hey, and welcome to The Office Field Guide. My name's Chris, and I'm reviewing every episode of The Office ever. And today, we're looking at the Alliance. Do you want to form an alliance with me? Absolutely, I do. Good. Good. Excellent. The Alliance is the fourth episode of The Office. It was written by Michael Schur and directed by Brian Gordon. And your Alliance trivia is, what job does Jim say Meredith has? And what is her real job? Answer the trivia first, spout out the Easter egg, and or leave the best emoji sequence summing up next week's episode, and you'll get your name in that field guide. Today we're going to talk about the first appearance of someone who's going to stay with us for all nine seasons. We're going to talk about this guy for a minute. Donald Trump. And a breakdown of the alliances forged and what they mean. And so be warned that there may be spoilers for the series ahead. And with that, let's shake down the competition. I understand nothing. This feels like a cold opening, right? Michael! Oh, God! I, Dwight, come on! I wanted to talk to you about the downsizing. I think I can make it one. Do I need to be worried? Mm, 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 maybe. Breathe it in. The Alliance is actually starting to get all the ingredients together to make a real episode of The Office. What? What the hell is going on here? I mean, we still have some missteps, like Pam isn't generally this sassy. By saying that, she was gambling that I wouldn't smack her. And I'll get into that in the ratings, but I do have some first in this one. Like the first mention of the Dundies. What do you know about Meredith? Employer, Dunder Mifflin Paper Incorporated, awards multiple Dundies. Those are the first time that we go down to the warehouse. The first time we see Craig Robinson portraying Daryl. I read that Daniel sought after Robinson because he'd seen a funny video that Robinson made. I couldn't really find out what video it was, it was a music video, so if you know it, leave it in the comments and I'll pin it. I do know that Robinson is obviously a natural performer. Before he went onto the stage, he was teaching music and started taking improv classes at Second City in Chicago. The Office spurred Robinson's career forward, but I'd say outside the office, I mostly know him as... The Pontiac Bandit foiled at last! Yeah. Wow! You guys, thank you very much. All right, and back to first in this one. This is the first in a long line of birthday parties we'll see in The Office. <laughs> well, well, can't... All right. Happy birthday to... It is your birthday period. It's a statement of fact. That's a pretty lame party. Now all I like is baklava. The staff newsletter is shown here for the first time. Pulled off an amazing 80s party last year. Off the hook. We're gonna hear about this years later. Group photo for the newsletter. You gotta be kidding. I love the little details inside this newsletter though. Thinking through all the work that had to go into this two to three second bit is really impressive. Also, the text is nonsense. My favorite part is, in fact, at times, we can probably get away with not using real English words, such as, and I'm not even gonna try to pronounce those. Come on! Well, this may be a loose piece of foreshadowing to the Branch Wars. I have just convinced Dwight that he needs to go to Stanford and spy on our other branch. <laughs> Absolutely I do is a thing in this show. Absolutely I do, good. I learned from Jim. If Dwight ever asks you if you accept something secret, you reply, Absolutely, I do. Michael's future unobtainable generosity is first shown here. I'm always good for some serious buckage. Wow, $2, $3? Per mile. Per mile, yes. Last year he walked 18 miles. Son of a bitch. That is impressive. And that's $450. And I can't help but feel a little bad for Michael here. I'll get into that in just a minute, but he's clearly not understanding what his pledge is, or at very least, Oscar should know he's being uncharacteristically charitable. I've made some empty promises in my life, but hands down, that was the most generous. But when he tries to correct it just a couple hours later, Oscar gives him a really hard time about it. It's however many dollars per right. mile. Got it. Yes, so it does. Um, I just think it's kind of cheap to undonate money to a charity. No. So I don't know if Oscar's point is spot on, especially since the series explores this idea later with really reneging on a donation. Has it really been 10 years? <laughs> okay, and there's a lot of background information about this box that's been discussed by the Office Ladies podcast, for example. All of it's pretty great. But what I want to know is what's up with this fake rat? Do I have a choice? No. Frankly, I don't. Will I trust Jim? I mean, that had to be on purpose, right? What does the rat represent? 
Probably nothing. Let's go to the deeper meaning. What does a bean mean? Someone please explain it to Kai. So just like Diversity Day name dropped a couple of comedians that would frame up how we're supposed to read that episode, The Alliance does the exact same thing. Both Survivor... An Alliance? Oh yeah. What does that even mean? I think it has something to do with Survivor, but I'm not sure. Um... <laughs> and Apprentice. I think the main difference between me and Donald Trump is that uh, I get no pleasure out of saying the words, you're fired. You're fired. Are referenced during this episode. According to Wikipedia, because I'm way too lazy to write my own synopsis for the show, Survivor places a group of strangers in an isolated location where they must provide food, fire, and shelter for themselves. Contestants compete in challenges for rewards and immunity from elimination. The contestants are progressively eliminated from the game as they are voted out by their fellow contestants until only one remains and is given the title of sole survivor. One day, 14 strangers who work together, but only one survivor. What? And is also given a grand prize of a million dollars. One million dollars! The show originally aired in May of 2000 and it ended in, it's actually still on, 38 seasons later and I've literally never watched one episode. Also though, fun fact, a few office people did work on Survivor. The Apprentice, on the other hand, and again I quote, aspiring but otherwise unknown business persons and later celebrities would vie for the show's prize, a one-year $250,000 starting contract to promote one of Donald Trump's properties. Right, so I'm gonna have some young people who's gonna see this. Before Trump moved into the political realm, he used to have a crazy popular reality show in which he taught business people principles about business or something. His catchphrase was, you're fired, you're fired, you're fired, you're fired. You're fired, get out of here. Either way, both of those shows actually pit people against each other while having them work towards the same end. I can't get into those types of shows normally though for a variety of reasons, but I get it. I get why we as a society watch those things, why Survivor's been on for 38 seasons. I think an alliance might be a good idea. You know, help each other out. We need to figure out who's vulnerable and who's protected. Talking head interviews in those shows are a way to add additional context to why people do what they do. Like an author narrating the inner thoughts of a character, we get a deeper understanding of the motives of these contestants. We get that in The Office too. I mean, everything Dwight does annoys me. And I spend hours thinking of ways to get back at him, but only in ways that would get me arrested. But, and I wanna say this is the only time we actually hear the phrase, at that moment, in an office talking head. At that moment, I was just so happy. As though the documentary interviewer just asked Jim what he was thinking about at that moment. Either way, when we break this episode down between the two plots, we get the feeling that people are generally not to be trusted, and that even if you find someone you can ally with, it just may not work out. I'm to drive to Connecticut <laughs> and put my right side in his hair. <laughs> what the hell is this? What are you trying to cop a feel or something? No, 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 dude, no. Dude, hey, no, hey, dude, hey. I was just- We again see Michael play the part of the company and the main antagonist of the general happiness of the office. Let's hope the only downsizing that happens to you is that someone downsizes your age. While his intentions seem to be pretty good on the surface, get set for operation morale improvement. In general, they're pretty self-serving. Starring Michael Scott. Sometimes our authority figures then are not people that we're supposed to ally with. We are going to turn Secret Santa into Yankee Swap. He's not supposed to just spring things on us out of nowhere. Because quite often the bus rolls downhill. Because then you won't be able to plan your stupid tacky parties anymore. So you move the tree. Well, if our authority isn't someone that we should ally with, what about our peers? So listen, I was thinking that it might be a good idea if you and I formed an alliance. And the episode explores that with the Jim Dwight alliance. And just like any relationship, we have to look at that from both sides. From one side, Dwight somehow thinks that the office place will play out like a reality survivor, apprentice type show. Even believing Jim when he says, You are not going to believe this. What? I believe it. Toby and Kevin, they're trying to get Angela kicked off. Kicked off what? For real, Jim plays directly into Dwight's delusion, and I love it. Damn it. And for years after watching this episode, I actually thought Dwight realized at some point that Jim was pranking him. We've just been messing with him uh, because of the whole alliance thing. An alliance? What the hell is he talking about? 
I have absolutely no idea. Only to realize that Dwight's monologue in the end means that he threw Jim under the bus simply because he saw an opportunity to ally himself with someone stronger. That's the game. Convince him we're in an alliance, get some information, throw him to the wolves. That's politics, baby. Get what you can out of someone, then crush them. And Jim's side's not that hard to understand. He's just messing with Dwight. There may be chatting and giggling. Go upstairs to the party so people don't notice that we're both gone. Right. I told him that he should dye his hair to go undercover. When we look at this alliance, it was built to fail in the first place because neither side was truly committed to it in the first place. Let's keep this alliance totally a secret. Don't tell anyone. An alliance? Oh yeah. What does that even mean? And if these alliances are metaphors for relationships in our lives, then it's pretty easy to see the messages that if we go into a relationship ready to jump ship or not committed in the first place, they're bound to fall apart at the first sign of trouble. But taking that a bit further, we get to see a heavier message about how relationships sometimes just can't happen. Jim catches himself gushing on camera. That was beautiful. All her idea too. Awesome. She's so great. But then he continues to ally himself with someone who can't fully commit to their alliance. The problem is they're so obviously meant for each other. Compare Pam in Michael's office. She's sad and she's voiceless. You still want to have a party? Yeah, why not? Sure. Go ahead. Live a little. I'm not Pam. Come on, shake it up. Shake it in. Compare Pam in the party planning committee. She's bored out of her mind. Blue. Yellow. Red. And now compare Pam allied with Jim. Um, <laughs> I know that it involves spying on people. Clearly much more confident, a fully alive Pam. And the same actually works for Jim if you look at him over the last couple episodes. The alliance then ends by making it clear that the alliance between Jim and Pam, as natural, as good as it is, it just can't happen. And neither really should it, because you know, she's already in an alliance. In his air. Oh, what the hell is this? What are you trying to cop a feel or something? No, 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 dude, no. Dude, hey. no. And betrayal is bad. See, that's all of this to say is that there will always be people and powers that are present in our lives, and we have a choice on whether or not we ally with them or we keep our distance. We have to go into any alliance very carefully, though, because everyone's only out to look out for themselves. But if you find that person who will continue to have your back, even when things get tough, that's the kind of alliance you want to stay in. But with that, let's rate this thing. This is the worst. Okay, season one. Let's talk about the positives here. Like I said, we're starting to get the office formula down. Jim's prank on Dwight is exemplary of their relationship and how it's gonna be for years to come. Dwight taking something really seriously, Jim not taking that thing seriously, and then they play off each other in this really interesting dynamic. In the warehouse during Meredith's birthday. Oh my God, we have to be there. I know, but it's gonna be a little tough because there's no good place to hide. No, no, yes there is. And it honestly is a lot of fun. The Jim Pam drama is dialed up in this episode as well. Also, the stinger at the end is pretty great. So the negatives, this episode is slow. Is Oscar around? The roots of the UK office are showing through here, and I get it. That's what they were going for. I'm just not a fan. And you know who else wasn't? The millions of people this show was losing every week. Oh, surprise. I will admit that some of the show's methodical scenes do have a decent payoff, but decent is the key word there. Some of the cutaway gags are both effective, but awkward when taking the series as a whole. Did you get your tickets? To what? The gun show. So all up against every episode of The Office, I give this one a two out of five. It's all right, but it is a step in the right direction. I have absolutely no idea. But that's just what I think about the Alliance. What are your thoughts? Leave it in the comments. I want to hear what you have to say. And don't forget about the comment contest, the emoji sequence for next week's episode, which is basketball. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.